Welcome back to Surveying with Robert's Tuesday Tip. <laughs> I should be saying welcome to this bright and sunny morning. <clears throat> wow, tried to get this done yesterday and everything went wrong. <clears throat> so <laughs> we're gonna try to do it again today. <clears throat> okay, so today my plan is, is to um, work with you guys on um, calibration files, right? So. I've got some people I've been talking to and they have like these huge files. They go out and calibrate a site and they just keep bringing points into that job because um, I really, I think that some people really don't understand the organization that you really need to do with these points. So I kind of thought I would kind of do a, a twofer, right? I'm going to try to kind of show you site calibration and maybe even um, show you guys a little bit more about file management, I'm gonna say, and, and how you're going to save that projection uh, on your localization, actually save that localization and use it on, in other jobs. I'll show you guys how you can do that as well. So, uh, one of the things I might mention is uh, I'm gonna be teaching a class at Trimble Dimension. So if you guys wanna come, I know it's not going to be the big dimensions that they normally have, but it is Trimble Dimensions, and I'm going to be there speaking as, where's it at? Surveying with Robert. So, um, teaching a TBC class on um, how to fix screw-ups. How's that for you? So, um, anyways, what I want to do right now is uh, show you guys how all this stuff works. So, I've got the R750 base set up which as you guys know from one of my other videos is really kind of one of my favorite base stations. I really like using this thing. I, I know maybe it's the nostalgia of the cable and wires. I don't know from you know the old days, but I just really like this setup uh, for a base station. So I've got my base, I've got my external antenna. I don't have an external uh, battery source hooked up to it right now because I'm not gonna be here that long. We're gonna do this site calibration. So, um, got my Zephyr antenna on it, so we're ready to roll. So we're running two watts from the internal. Um, crazy thing is right now I got 32 satellites. So everybody's always asked me, does that base station pick up as many satellites as R12 does? I was picking up 32 right now, so what do you think? <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let's get into this. So what I've done is I created a, a, um, a CAD file. I kind of mocked up a um, a property with a building, a sewer line, and a water line. So uh, I've actually set those nails around here. So those, those points uh, for the four corners of the property, right, that we've got on here. So uh, if you guys want to know more about how to build this file that I created, I have a website called Surveying with Robert. I think I told you guys a little bit about it. It's a membership website. It's like 15 bucks a month, but um, I recorded the CAD, how I did this in CAD, how I put this file together, this drawing and everything. So my plan is on that website is to kind of drill down more on some of the questions that you guys have for me. Um, and on YouTube, I'm just going to kind of keep it general, right? So um, if you want to know more, go there. Okay, so first thing I need to do is go to measure. I'm going to go to RTK and I'm going to say start base. Okay, we're gonna say number one. I'm gonna hit the arrow over here to the right. I'm gonna say key in, and down here in the lower left-hand corner, I'm gonna say here. I will call this CP base, enter, store. And it is actually 2.25 meters, be oh, not 2.25 2 feet. 2.25 meters, enter, start. That's two meters plus that 0.25 meter rod there. Base started, okay. So we have our base started. So now we need to do a site calibration, right? So let's go ahead and fire up the rover so we can go shoot these points in. Measure, we're just gonna go into RTK. I'm just gonna say measure points. So the calibration point is in the measure points tab. Okay, so you'll see down here where it says method. If you look about halfway down the right hand side, just below CP base there, I've got in there. If you hit calibration, you can see you've got just your normal topo point or pull down, we do a calibration point. So for calibration point, you need a CSV point. You need a grid point. 
um, with a um, you know 5,000, 5,000, whatever coordinate system you want to use. If we look at my coordinates, you can see I'm running basically 5,000, 5,000, point number one, which is 100, which is over there. So we're going to calibrate to that. We're going to save this. I'm going to restart the base, and we're going to do this again. So let's head over to that point real quick, and let's see what we can do. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's start out with number 100 here first. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get out of here. So we got grid point name is gonna be 100. You're gonna see it automatically sets it to 100 GNSS, right? So if I go into options down here at the bottom, I've got some options. I'm gonna say fix horizontal scale to one because I'm on 5,000, 5,000, so I'm gonna scale factor of one, right? So let's do that. Um, you got some difference on some vertical adjustments, uh, constraint adjustment only, fix horizontal rotation, auto calibrate, uh, observation. So on the observation, we can choose what we want to do. We can either do a topo point or an observed control point. So if I said observed control point, that means it's going to go for 180 epics, right? Because that's what's in my um, my style is going to be 180 epics. So our observed control point, yeah, we can we can always stop it. Okay. So method add suffix. So this is where that underscore GNSS comes from. We can do um, a suffix, a prefix, or whatever. And then we're gonna add underscore GNSS. That way we know which one is our calibration point and which one is our grid point, right? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go for all that. And I'm gonna say measure, as soon as I put in two meters for an antenna height, measure. Okay, so it's one to go for 180 epics. Now here's a little secret for you guys. 180 epics does not mean for 180 epics it is averaging the points. What 180 epics means is you're static for three minutes and it's gonna take the last shot. I thought it averaged it, gotta admit. But when I was talking to some guys from Trimble, they're like, nope, it goes for three minutes and basically you're static during that period of time. So theoretically, by the time you get to the end, Whatever the number is is what the number is, and then you're gonna store it. So FYI, a lot of things I'm doing, I like to do a do like an average. So uh, this thing's gone for 46 seconds. I'm gonna call it good. I just hit the blue button and let it go. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got um, site calibration now. You're looking at the screen, everything looks good. So we're just going to say apply and it should jump us right back into the next one. So the next one we're going to do is going to be the next um, control point down here. We're going to shoot it and see what happens. So <clears throat> let's grab everything and head that way. Okay, here's a tip for you. Don't let your bipod get wet, because if you do, they sure don't work very well. They can be a pill. Okay, so we're on the next point, which as you can see on the screen, is 101, okay? So, because it's already somewhat calibrated to that first point. So let's go 101. Enter, 101 GNSS, measure. There again, I'll let it do about 30 seconds or so, and then I will uh, just hit the blue square on the side, and it'll go ahead and accept it. Rocking 30 satellites this morning, not bad. 20, 21, 22, 23, come on. 
Come on. We ain't got all day. Come on. 30. Enter. Required number of measurements not met. Yes. Okay. So that's what we've got so far. Ooh, vertical residual. Huh? Oh, you know what? I didn't... Um, these have got like BS elevations on them. That's what the problem is. So let's just look at horizontal right now. We, we, we could use one of them for vertical if we wanted to. Um, looks like on 101, I'm about 500 soft right now. So let's hit apply. Takes us back to the next one. Oh, boy, the sun's bright out here. You know, these videos look a whole lot better in the afternoon than they do in the morning. The sun is more kind of even. Whoa, the morning. Huh. It is beaten down right in my face. But we're worried about content, not beauty, right? That's what I think anyways. Okay. So, we are here at 102. We're going to do 102. So, I just want to let you guys know, like I said, I got that, that CAD file, that Civil 3D file, on the website. And I show you how I drew it, calc the points, did all that other stuff. So, uh, I'm also going to do, try to do the same thing this week with TBC. I'm going to see if I can't build it in TBC, do the same thing with the points, and show you guys how to do it as well. And I'm going to load that on the website. So, if you guys want to go check it out. Now also there's a forum on there, so if you guys want to like ask me a question or something, just go on that forum, ask me a question, especially what I'm really looking for is video ideas for, you know, you guys have a problem or an issue and, and you want a video to, you know, to help you figure out how to solve a problem somewhere. That's kind of my goal. Okay, so let's shoot in 102 real quick. Enter, measure. Okay, same thing, we're going to do 30 epics on here. And then, um, then we're gonna move up to the next one. And then the last one we may stake out to see where we're at. And then I'll show you the other points that I've calced up and explain to you what and why I did it. And we will probably do that in a shade somewhere where you maybe at least there's not this blistering glare on me, right? Okay, close enough. Okay, it's telling me 300s, 300s, 400s. So mm, I'm doing a scale factor of one so it's telling me what it is based on scale factor of one so let's uh my like i said my vertical is trash now i can go in and edit any one of those and just say horizontal only for that one i can say horizontal only for that one and that makes that means 101 is one i'm using for vertical right so, um, it's an okay point. Okay, let's move to the next one. Uh, like I said, we'll check that last one and see how that works. Okay, I don't know what my brain was thinking. I guess I didn't think I shot as many points as I had. This is the last one. There's only four. Oh, I was thinking. Anyways, we're going to stake, we're going to apply everything and stake this out. Maybe. If I can get that thing on the nail. Boy, and I'm going to tell you what. These bipods. Mm, 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 mm. Somebody needs to build a better bipod. One that can. It doesn't stick all the time. Almost sounds like a Huey Lewis song, doesn't it? I think you can make a song out of it. Make her where she don't stick anymore. I'm talking about the bipod, by the way. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if we look back at the residuals again. We are 300s, almost 400s, by 300s, by 400s. And I turned off the vertical for two of them, and I'm only holding the vertical on one of them. Okay, so uh, we're going to hit results and this is what she's going to look like vertical's trash 
rotation, scale factor, horizontal residuals. We're going to say apply. And there we go. Okay, so now then, we're good to go. So if I go to stakeout points, and I want to do 103 down here. One oh three, stick out. Okay, so it says I gotta go south six hundreds, go west few thousands. So my sight calibration isn't all that great. So um, I'm sure GPS error is probably what it is, because you know I set these points on the money. So sight calibration, there you go. That's how it works. So we can measure, store that point. I could go ahead and add this into the calibration if I wanted to. Um, so I just go to calibration point and I would say 103. Yes, enter, measure. So like at one video I did on calibration, you could use two to find the rest of them. I didn't do that because I already did the video on that, but you get the idea, right? Okay, 16, 18, and maybe if I let it go for the whole, full 180 epics, maybe it'd been better. <laughs> yeah, apply, and there we go. Okay, so anyways, yeah, let's not use that last one. <laughs> so that was 500 off. Okay, so there's that. So what I wanna do is use, the, the big goal here is to be able to um, stake out everything I need to stake out, but if I come back, can I get back on the same projection? Because I'm not state plane coordinates, I'm on, a, um, I'm on a different projection. So at this point in time, I've done my projection. So do I stake out? I wouldn't. I would do what I'm fixing to do right now, but I am gonna show you something. So what I did was I've got to, let me just make this a little bit bigger. We could probably slide that over a little bit so you can see what's going on. So I've got, I called it office. I don't know what else to call it. No, I'm not building a new office. I just called it office. So what I've done is I have created a DWG and DXF because I wanted to compare the two and see what they look like. Um, so I did that. If you hit that arrow right there, there's everything that's in there. So if I start turning things off, like building, labels, property line, I start turning all this stuff off, and waterline, except everything goes away. Now then, if all I'm interested in is the property line, I just just bring up the property line. That's about file management. That's the layers because I've got layers set up on each one of those lines. So that's a layer management, right? So if you do that, works out pretty good. So I've got the control points in here. So if I go back to point files, you'll see I've got the property corners in there. So if I hit accept, oh, the GNSS points are in there because I shot those, but I turned the other points. Now I don't have double points in there. How's that? So these, are gonna be on a different layer. Um, they're gonna be on their own layer. Filter, features, I think it's gonna be under that layer right there, maybe. Nope. Yep, it's on zero. So it automatically put it on layer zero when I shot it because I didn't have any kind of feature code or anything else for it. So, okay, so we figured that out. So now if we go to, wrong button, if I go back to the base map, and I go to point files, and let's say I want to stake out the building corners. There's my building corners. So now what I want to do, go to map files, go back to office. Yeah, I'm gonna leave property on, I'm gonna turn building on. Now, you know, when you get the little dotted checkbox around the check mark, it means it's selectable, right? So accept. So there's the building corners, and there's the points that I calped up. Like I said, how I did all this in Civil 3D is on my website. If you want to go check it out, I'll show you how I put all that stuff together, the point groups and all that stuff. So, okay, so you get the idea, right? I can stake out anything I want to stake out. So what I want to do right now is I want to set a nail somewhere off over here to the side. So 
back in the day, my guys, whenever we did like a Lowe's, a Home Depot, Walmart or something like that, we always try to set some control points off site somewhere in case something happened. So we're gonna do that so that I can show you guys kind of how, to me, this system works and how you need to do this. Because um, where that base is setting is inside the property line. It's probably gonna get, I mean, in the real world, it's probably gonna get knocked out, right? It's, it's on the site. That can be a problem. So let's move a control point somewhere off to the side. Let's shoot it, bring it into the file that we're working on, okay? And then um, we're gonna bring it into there and we're gonna use it. And then we are going to um, turn around and um, set up on it, set the base up on it. We're gonna do that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set that point. You guys know how to set a point. You don't need me telling you. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that point. I'm gonna go move the base and set it up on it. And then I'll come back and I'll show you guys how this stuff works, okay? Okay, guys, so I got the, I got that point set. I call it point number two. And um, let me go in here to point files, turn off that. So I had turned off layer zero a while ago. So let me go to filter or features. Yeah, okay. Let me turn that back on. Base, CP, CP, invalid, uncoded. Not sure what those are. We'll turn those off. Let's turn these on. So you can see where I set CP number two at. I zoom down. So CP number two. Okay. So let's see. Can I control? Um, I think if I turn these off, it's going to mess me up. Let's see. Yep. So let me try turning on CP. It says there's eight. There's two of those. Ah, anything I do is going to turn all of them on. Anyways, because I cut them all CP. Anyways, just another way to kind of manage your points, right? Okay. So um so what we want to do is uh i've ended the survey so what i want to do is is i want to be able to use this as a base but i want to keep my projection right so i've set this point i've come back tomorrow and or next week or next month or whatever now i need to get back on this projection this this um, local this calibration localization without having to do it again so what you're going to do is you're gonna go into, I'm gonna go into this job and um, I'm gonna look at, if I go to the properties and look, you're gonna see it says Mississippi East 2301 site. I need to be able to copy that and to be able to use it again. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to escape out. So I'm gonna go into settings, templates, and I'm gonna to go to um, new. I can choose which one I want. Okay, so we're gonna create a new one. We're not gonna use an existing one. We're gonna create a new one. And I'm gonna say last used job and it's gonna give me Mississippi East site because that was the last one I just did, right? So we'll call this control, whoops, project. And I mean, you'd call it whatever the name of the job was. If you had job number four or a name or whatever, that's what you'd use, okay? So uh, layer manager, if I want to, I could got, I've got all my different settings in here. If there's something in here I wanna set to where when that template comes up, it has it in there. So let's say that I wanted to do um, the building and the property lines, except, except. Okay, so now uh, I've got one called control project. So now then if I get out of there and I go office control, see if, if I just start up a job without that template in it, that projection's gone. So if I say new and I say control project, there it is. I say, um, I'm just gonna call it test one. Whoops, if I could spell. Ow, something's attacking my ears except 
Okay, so if I go zoom extents, let's see, I would have thought, oh, apparently it didn't come up. Let's get rid of the labels. I'm going to turn all my layers off, except, okay, so there's that. So now I want to go in, keep hitting the wrong button. So now I want to go into point files. So I've got my office control, which is what I did while ago. That was my job. So now you'll see I'm in that projection and look at, look at where I'm at on the screen. On that point right there so now then i can go in and i'm just going to say measure i'm going to say rtk i'm going to start base point number two 2.25 meters start base started okay so now then if we go and stake out I'll go to RTK. I'm gonna say stake out points. I wanna stake out 100, which would be that point over there. So, as long as my receiver is still on, looks like it is. We'll connect up to it Bluetooth and we'll go stake that out and see how we hit it. Okay, so our rover's starting. 100 to the point, two meters. Whoops, got finger happy. Okay, says it's over there. Let's go. Uh, let's go see if we can find it. Okay, we're gonna stake this point out and see how we hit. Drum roll, please. Looks like we are north, a couple hundreds. Looks like we're west, hundredth, maybe. It's bouncing around. It says our fill is eight or nine hundredths. This is the one that we used for, originally for the benchmark, right? We held this one. So, um, six hundredths, five hundredths. GPS, right? And remember on my site calibration, I didn't stand there for 180 epics or anything. Didn't do anything crazy on my site calibration, right? So I just shot it just so I could show you guys. So anyways, there you go. So move the base on a different point. We, um, we captured that uh, site calibration by creating a template, by creating that... Um, Mississippi State Plains site, by capturing that, we're able to capture our projection and now we can use it. Anytime we come out here, we can use that template for this job. So when you create a new job, you just go to that template, boom. And whatever the name of this job is, and use that, life is good. So, okay, like I said, recap. Um, drawing, how I put it together, is on my website. Right now I've got Civil 3D up. Hopefully I can, by the end of the week, yeah, maybe. I got a lot going on. Um, or by the, man, let's just say by the weekend. I should have it drawn in Civil 3D as well. In Civil 3D. I'll have it drawn, Pooh, it's gonna be a long week. I'll have it drawn in Trumbull Business Center as well as in Civil 3D. I'll show you how to draw this in both of them and how to organize your points because like I said, we go in here and look, I've got all my points um, in here. So if I go in and I turn off my point files, turn off those point files, there you go. So if I go in right now and I say, hey, you know what? I just need to stake these building corners and that's all I wanna see, there you go. You wanna turn that base point off? Just go to features, turn all that off. Now that base point's gone. So there's nothing on the screen except for the points that you're wanting to stake out. So you want to go in and settings. I want to get rid of 
uh, codes and I want to get rid of elevations. So I just want to see the point numbers. That's how you do it. <clears throat> you go into settings, turn everything off. Now all I can see is the point numbers. So if I escape, escape, go back to the map, I select a point, hold down somewhere over here. I say stake out, boom, I'm staking out to that point. How's that for you? Good stuff? I think it's good stuff. It's a lot to cover. And I hope this video ain't like two hours long at the end of it, but it's a lot to cover. But anyways, hopefully um, this solves a problem for a couple of guys that I know we're having an issue. So um, I'm gonna try to get this uploaded um, and, and have it for a Tuesday tip. That's my plan. I have two other videos. I'm gonna try to post one of them this afternoon and then I'll probably post one sometime in the week, maybe like Thursday or something like that, I'll post the other one. So uh, one of those is a comparison between the Halo radio and the 2.4 gigahertz radio on SX-12. And the other one is the, um, it's that new feature I was telling you guys about, the object-oriented setup. Man, I can never remember that. Object-oriented setup. I'm showing you guys how to do that as well. So anyways, uh, guys, check out my website. Let me know what videos you want to see on there. And um, God bless. I love you guys. Um, I'm going to Trimble Dimensions to teach that class. I'm going to Hawaii. Customer's actually paying for me to go to Hawaii. And I'm doing a presentation there. I'll tell you guys all about that stuff later. I'm going to Gunnersville for the uh, Alabama conference. I'm going to Arkansas for the Arkansas conference. I'm doing presentations at both of them. I'm doing presentations everywhere. So anyways, guys, like and subscribe. As always, love you guys. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video, whenever that'll be.